The Guardian News. By the Nicholas Watt. No 10 states David Cameron will deliver on Scottish devolution promise Downing Street moves to clarify intent after Alex Salmond and Alistair Darling challenge PM on voting rights for Scottish MPs. Downing Street has issued an unequivocal no ifs, no buts declaration that David Cameron will deliver on his pledge to devolve further powers to the Scottish Parliament after the Prime Minister was accused of reneging on his promise to the people of Scotland. No 10 moved to clarify its thinking after Alex Salmond and Alistair Darling challenged the Prime Minister over his decision to link further devolution to Edinburgh to new restrictions on the voting rights of Scottish MPs. As the outgoing Scottish First Minister accused the Prime Minister of tricking the voters of Scotland, No 10 said the Prime Minister was committed to the timetable agreed by the three main UK party leaders to hand greater powers over tax and welfare to Holyrood. A government source said, there was an unambiguous commitment by the party leaders to deliver more devolution to Scotland on a clear timetable. That is not conditional on anything else. No ifs, not buts, that will occur. A Downing Street spokesperson said Lord Smith of Kelvin would oversee a process that would see the publication of draft legislation in January. The spokesman added, this government has delivered on devolution and we will do so again in the next parliament. Downing Street moved to clarify its stance after the Scottish-born Tory chief whip, Michael Gove, said on Saturday that it would be impossible to devolve further powers to Scotland without addressing the position of Scottish MPs at Westminster. This could include banning them from voting on English-only matters. Gove's remarks followed the declaration by the Prime Minister in Downing Street on Friday morning, shortly after the pro-UK side won the referendum that further devolution to Scotland must take place in tandem with, and at the same pace, as the changes to the status of Scottish MPs. Government sources stress that the two proposals, further devolution to Scotland and changing the status of Scottish MPs at Westminster, should be considered in parallel and at the same time. But the sources said that progress in one area would not be dependent on the other. The proposal to devolve further powers to Holyrood would be overseen by Smith, a crossbench peer. The plans to address the West Lothian question, the anomaly whereby Scottish MPs can vote on English-only matters while English MPs have no say on devolved matters in Scotland, would be addressed by a cabinet committee. This will be chaired by William Hague, the leader of the Commons. The clarification from Downing Street came after Labour and the SNP. Bitter foes in the referendum campaign, questioned the Prime Minister's integrity. The Prime Minister joined forces with Ed Miliband and Nick Clegg during the referendum campaign to issue a vow of further devolution to Holyrood which made no mention of limiting the voting power of Scottish MPs. Miliband insisted that such major constitutional changes should be introduced with care as he reiterated his call for a constitutional convention to consider the matter next autumn. He suggested he would limit the changes to giving English MPs greater scrutiny of legislation relating solely to England. Labour would struggle to govern without the support of its 41 Scottish MPs. The Labour leader told the Andrew Marr show on BBC One, I am open to the idea of greater scrutiny of legislation by English MPs. But we can't do it in a back of the envelope, fag packet way. We have spent two years trying to keep our country together. Let's have a proper constitutional convention. Let's look at these issues. But let's not drive our country apart because David Cameron thinks it is an opportunity for him to do it. Salman said that no voters in the referendum would feel they have been misled, gulled, and tricked. The First Minister told the Sunday Politics on BBC One, I am actually not surprised they are cavilling and reneging on commitments. I am only surprised by the speed at which they are doing it. They seem to be totally shameless in these matters. The Prime Minister wants to link change in Scotland to change in England. He wants to do that because he has difficulty in carrying his backbenchers on this and they are under pressure from UKIP. Darling insisted that there could be no link between further powers for Holyrood and limiting the voting rights of Scottish MPs at Westminster. The leader of the Better Together campaign told the Andrew Marr show, the agreement reached by the three parties, as far as I am concerned, is non-negotiable.
It was promised, it has got to be delivered. Anyone who welches on that will pay a very heavy price for years to come. It is simply non-negotiable. There's a separate issue about what further constitutional change comes to the UK. But, just be very clear about this, you cannot hold up or delay in any way at all what was promised. The three leaders gave an absolute commitment and I am confident they will deliver on it. The intervention by Downing Street suggests that No. 10 is planning for a pre-election scenario in which the plans for further devolution to Scotland would be agreed and published. But there would be no agreement on changing the status of Scottish MPs, allowing the Tories to accuse Labour of failing to stand up for English voters. Labour has 41 Scottish MPs. The Tories have won, David Mundell. Downing Street received a boost when Sir William Mackay, the former clerk of the House of Commons who considered modest limits to the role of Scottish MPs in an official report, said his reforms might have to be changed in light of the outcome of the referendum. Mackay proposed that only English MPs should sit on the committee stage of a parliamentary bill that related just to England. It could then only be passed through a double majority voting system, achieving support of the majority of English MPs and the majority of the Commons as a whole. But Mackay told the world this weekend on BBC Radio 4, you can't lower any of our solutions, immediately and without amendment, into the present situation. They will have to be tweaked, a fairly hefty tweak, more a kick than a tweak.